My life took a sudden change. In 2014, I discovered a cancer in my head. I had a tumor. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. So, yeah, I mean, I, it was a big shock for the first two days. And then I realized it was a very, it was the biggest gift I could ever get. And wow. I've seen... We stand today. The Business Method. The business with method. a shout The Business Method. The Business Method Podcast. The Business Method Podcast featuring Chris Reynolds. Entrepreneurs, systems, methods, tools, and tactics for location independence. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm your host, Chris Reynolds, and welcome to the Business Method Podcast, a podcast featuring successful entrepreneurs and high-profile people dissecting their online and location-independent business models. We dissect the different methods, tools, and tactics of high-performance online entrepreneurs and high-caliber people in a series format. On our first series, we interviewed 100 entrepreneurs in 100 days that had built businesses creating $100,000 or more annually. On our second series, we are interviewing 100 entrepreneurs that have built location-independent businesses that generate a million dollars or more in annual revenue. There's a growing movement of people building these caliber of businesses, and we are getting behind the minds, the logic, and the science of what it takes to build businesses like this. On top of that, we also gather entrepreneurs at events and retreats around the world. This October, we are having our annual event in Thailand, Get Shit Done Live. It's 10 days of high-performance productivity, targeted collaboration, and rapid execution designed for entrepreneurs to get a lot of work done in a little amount of time. Some say it's like 10 months of work in 10 days. There's a magic that happens when brilliant minds come together to push one another towards productive execution. That is exactly what this retreat is about. Check out all the details at thebusinessmethod.com. That is thebusinessmethod.com. Now, let's jump in today's show. The Business Method. Hey listeners, I'm glad you're joining us today on the Business Method Podcast. Today we chat with fellow location independent entrepreneur, Marcel Gasser. Marcel has been involved in the creation of 10 companies in the past five years and directly created and built six of those himself. He's the leader of the Swiss chapter for Global Entrepreneurship Network and travels the world 10 months out of the year. He's quite the serial entrepreneur. What is even more inspiring about Marcel is that in 2014, he found out that he had cancer and a brain tumor. He was crushed for approximately two days, and then he shifted his mindset from being a victim to seeing this as an opportunity and being grateful for the experience. He then set out on a two-year journey to heal himself from the experience, and we get to hear exactly how he did it. It's an incredible episode with an incredible entrepreneur, you guys, and without further ado, let's welcome Marcel to the show. Entrepreneurs, systems, methods, tools, and tactics. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Marcel Gasser joining us from Switzerland today, right? Yes. Well, yes. how are the mountains of Switzerland? Are you, are so I'm I'm going to ask you this, Marcel. Do you do people still yodel in the mountains of Switzerland? They still do, There's and no even way. my parents both yodel. Really? So, <laughs> what's the process of yodeling? Oh, I mean, I. I kind of didn't like it in my when I uh, in my childhood, but now as it's my uh, roots or traditions, uh, I kind of like it. I don't even know how they do. They do it with the tongue and breathing. I can't yodel, and I think many people cannot really yodel. What What's the purpose of yodeling? I think it's like. Um, I I think it's really traditional or uh, folk kind of. Uh, Thing and I, I kind of like it because it's a, it has a long tradition and I, I see it as a kind of meditation almost. Ah, uh, so it's not like, is it kind of like uh, just singing in the mountains? Is it's, it's not like you're calling in the sheep or the cows or anything, are you, with your yodels? I'm, no, that's not. But sometimes they do like prayers on the Alps actually. With wow. This uh, yodeling thing. That's amazing. So, do you, like, if you're walking through the countryside, is it common these days to hear people yodel? Uh, in the valley where I grew up, on the Alps, yes. Or if people get together, yes, they yodel, but not. You don't hear it every day. Wow, that's so cool. Oh wow, um, I'm gonna have to come to Switzerland and maybe visit you and and hear some yodeling and maybe participate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I can show you the best part. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on the show, my friend. And uh, we're glad to have you. We just met a couple weeks ago at Freedom X Fest, and we didn't get much time to talk. 
but uh, we got to hang out for a little bit. And uh, what I know of you, you're doing some amazing thing, amazing things in the world of entrepreneurship. And so I wanted to have you on the show and just kind of learn learn more about what you have going on. So um, if you don't mind, I'll give you the mic for a few minutes and you can kind of just tell us how you became the entrepreneur that you are today. Yeah, uh, I mean, we all have amazing stories and I've met so many amazing entrepreneurs and my story started kind of similar like uh, everybody else's story like i i didn't plan to become an entrepreneur it was like i traveled the world in 2007 for one year and i i i can really say that journey uh, changed my life i i i learned about a lot of my what's actually my passion my also i understood the privileges we have in uh, switzerland and so when i came back i started to uh, to found companies one after another and at the beginning it was in the it uh, field I, my background is finance and it so we did like hard and software and website development and Early on, we outsourced uh, the programming to China, actually, and it was quite uncommon in 2008 to do the programming in China. And it was a big adventure for me to be in China and to get familiar with the Chinese culture. And, and I was traveling quite often back and forth. And over that process or with these journeys, I... I I, I jumped into my next venture, which was the biggest company so far I built was an LED company. We produced LED lights. And the story behind was I, I kind of hang out with a friend of mine, or he was the friend of my business partner actually in Shanghai. And we were drinking in a bar in Shanghai and I asked what are you doing? And he was like, I own an LED company uh, with his brother. And I was like asking him how about Europe, and he was like, "You can do Europe." And I, I, I've seen the potential of this LED of the lights and the savings and the benefits also for the environment and financial benefits. So I was like, "Yes, we're gonna do Europe," and this is how we started. We we kind of jumped into the cold water, and it became very successful. We 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 doubled every year, and we had. Uh, I think in year three, we had like uh, almost 4 million turnover and we had international clients, very nice customers. And beside of that, I've done, I had always like my problem or many entrepreneurs face the same problems, I guess, is we see opportunities every day from early morning till uh, <laughs> late evening and mm -hmm. to kind of focus was always the challenge because I had like four companies usually in parallel and uh, did my MBA studies besides so I was really working too much. And let's go back to to the early days of your entrepreneurial ventures. You said you started outsourcing the programming to China. What business were you running then, Marcel? Uh, that was a website company. So we, we build websites at the, this stage also on WordPress already so we were quite early uh -huh. everyone was laughing on us like you use <laughs> for professional commercial websites and now it's kind of, kind of still the standard yeah for sure what was your did you grow up in an entrepreneurial family or what uh, did you kind of forge out and create your own path by starting businesses yourself uh, my my brother uh, my my brother my father and my other brother are all architects and uh, my father had his own company so I grew up in this environment and I believe really you you either have the the genes or whatever you call it to be an entrepreneur I think it's more a mindset mm -hmm. and once you jump into this freedom and becoming independent or your own boss, you I haven't met anyone going back to, let's say, corporate life. Right, that makes sense. And uh, how old were you when you started your first business? I was 26, um, yeah, with 26. 
Okay. And your main business now is the LED company, but I know you're working on some other things too, right? Yeah, there was a funny, it was a funny story. My life took a sudden change in 2014. I discovered a cancer in my head. I had a tumor. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, it was a big shock for the first two days. And then I realized it was a very, it was the biggest gift I could ever get. And I've seen the positive aspects. And so I healed myself. I didn't really trust the medical um the traditional medicine i i went to tibet and jungle of malaysia and so the journey was amazing this self-healing process and beside so after a year i was still healing myself in tibet and then some people told me that this my company my baby my everything i shouldn't call it my baby anymore and (laughs) when i went back to switzerland I went directly from the airport to office and I left without notice my my startup the same evening. So I left really my my everything. It was very painful. And the problem was I I had the wrong investor on board. And I realized when I was in Tibet that I cannot continue with him. So I left my own startup, which was a very... uh, uh, deep, painful, and life-changing experience. So, so let's go back to your story about the tumor and cancer, because I didn't know that, and I'd love to mm. to hear more about how you healed. Mm. Did you say that was 2014 when you when you found out you had a tumor? Yes, 2000. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then you said you said for two days it was a shock, and then and then you realize that it was a gift. Can you explain those two days and then how you shifted that mindset? Cause that's amazing. Um, to realize, uh, you know, most people that'll take months or even years to kind of turn that around. I'm just kind of curious how, it, how it played out for you. Um, I mean, I was, I can say I was really prepared. I, I started with this, uh, global uh, around the world journey in 2007. I, I, I came al- across already with some spiritual people, shamans in Guatemala and in Mexico. And from that point, I already was very curious about things we can't explain with our rational, rational minds. And when I discovered the tumor, it was actually, I w- walked in a hospital in Singapore and I told them what they need to do. So it was very much my intuition who told me I have a problem and the doctors need to do this and that and they found out and the healing process or these two days which you asked I mean I I suffered a lot because I didn't know how I will survive how I get this thing out of my head and so it was very uh, difficult for me and then I realized it's a big chance because I without the tumor I would I would have gone through a burnout for sure I was working too much and focusing too much on the external world and everything so I think after crying and drinking and suffering <laughs> for two days I really switched and the the most challenging part was actually to have the trust in myself that everything I I decide is right and I cannot be wrong and I will be healed and I will be healthy and I am healthy actually in this moment when I and the problem was really my family and the surrounding because everyone is telling you you're gonna risk your life and you have to rely on the doctors so that took me over a year to kind of say no I trust myself the most and I know what I'm doing so this was the biggest challenge, actually. So did they remove the tumor, or, or how, what happened? I, I had the surgery after two weeks when I found out so quite quick, and they could take out half of it because mm-hmm. it was quite big and risky. And then the rest, I stopped. I think after two months, I, I told the doctors I'm not coming back to the hospitals because... The problem was really I felt healthy and happy and I had a big smile on my face. Mm -hmm. And once I was in the hospital, I felt very shitty and taking all these chemicals and 
whatever. And then I was like, okay, I don't mind what you're doing, but it's not for me, so I'm going to find my own way. Mm -hmm. And this is how my healing journey started. And also as an entrepreneur, it's amazing what you what you discover on, on, on such a journey and what inspiration you get and uh, self-understanding you get. So what kind of things were you doing on your healing journey? Uh, I mean, I, I worked a lot with... Um, with some doctors from Tibet, which I actually knew before. And I kind of tried to simplify my life also because I came, I think it took me one year actually. I left my company in summer 15. So from that moment I was free. I had like this exit and I could enjoy my life and really focus on the spirit and healing. And I, the healing part is very easy because the cancer, for example, is nothing else than a, the strongest sign of your body that something is imbalanced. Mm -hmm. So you have to find out what's causing the imbalance and you will not uh, uh, find the solution when you take drugs or anything. You need to really find out what's causing the imbalance. Maybe it's the food, maybe it's your surrounding or your thoughts or the stress. So it's... Uh, for me, the healing was so simple. Once I understood, I, I have to uh, notice or observe myself what's causing that imbalance. And what were some of the things that you believe were causing the, the imbalances? Uh, that is interesting because I, I learned it last year. Actually, while meditating in India, I found out that it was related with my childhood and... Um, I'm a twin, mm -hmm. so being a twin for me was a kind of a nightmare, I would say, because <laughs> I was constantly in competition. So, I mean, it started even before I was born. I was in constant competition for, let's say, more love, for food, for recognition, for being better in school, having more success. So... The tumor actually caused growth hormone. My body was producing 10 times more growth hormone than the maximum. So I was almost uh, to burst or to explode. Mm -hmm. And so with finding out what actually caused my imbalance, I could resolve or uh, solve a lot of the, the issues related with that uh, tumor. And my body is now in a much better harmony, my spirit and mind too. Wow. And and have you been back to the doctors and see to check to see if a tumor's still there or is it completely gone? No, I never I mean the funny thing, once you have this strong trust, I cannot go back there. If there would be a problem, I, I trust myself, I would recognize it like that I even did it with my intu intuition. I went to the hospital, so I was able to do it once, so why I, I would be able to do it another time? So I have the strong trust that everything is fine. If there would be a problem, I go back to the hospital. I'm confident is, that everything is good. And so, so you went back and the process of healing for you was healing the emotions around things that happened in your childhood. I'm curious, how exactly did you, did you do that? Uh, who, I mean, I started summer 15 and the big conclusion was last uh, August, August 17. So it took me almost two years mm -hmm. To, and I, I mean, I invested, I would say, 50% of my time for really this personal journey and self, uh, self uh, development. That for me was an investment also for my business or my my professional, uh, because I can use a lot of this meditation and spiritual uh, components also in my business world. I. I train now startups how to use or to simplify their life and to focus on the really essentials. For me, uh, it's a multiple dimension level kind of thing. It, it, I mean, it's like everyone needs to find their own way. What worked the best for me to go really deep was kind of 
doing work with uh, Osho, for example. He's very controversial. I like it a lot. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're familiar with the maybe the uh, Osho uh, thing in Tuscany, the community. Uh, f- it resonated a lot because I'm an active person and Vipassana meditation doesn't really resonate. I need to do dynamic meditation and something active where and I can could let go a lot of my emotion that that's very healing if you have like burning meditation and you let go the anger and and all this stuck emotion that's basically for me was really to acknowledge also the shadow side of myself and uh, I think many people and also spiritual beings they're they're not aware or they don't really like to talk about their shades or their anger and everything. Yeah, it's very true. Now, how's your relationship with your twin now? I, I mean, he's like a regular brother for me. Uh-huh. Uh, like I have uh, four other, si- uh, three other siblings than beside of him, and I mean, it's still a stronger connection there. Uh, that's 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 for sure with this twin uh, relationship. Uh, I'm traveling a lot, so I only see him like four times a year, and there is still things to solve there. I, it's not everything solved. It's it is a painful process, and for me, it's like the life is an experience, mm-hmm. nothing else, and this is part of the experience, and uh, I'm I'm grateful for that. And once you're aware of it, you the uh, solving part will be much easier. Yeah, I'm curious if he had a similar experience growing up, feeling so competitive, or was that just your experience? It was mainly my experience. Uh, for him, I don't know too much about... Uh, to, uh, about uh, it would be actually interesting to know, but he's not like that outgoing like me or... Uh, let's say also spiritual but it would be actually an interesting thought how he kind of experienced uh, the childhood yeah for sure well that's amazing man and and congratulations on coming through that like a champion like that's really 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 impressive hey guys we hope you're enjoying marcel's interview we're going to wrap up the first part of the call there and continue tomorrow with marcel on the show where we talk more about how he's built and created 10 businesses in the past five years we also chat about location independence and how the seven-figure serial entrepreneur manages his lifestyle thanks for joining us once again we wanted to remind you about our high performance productivity coaching and our annual get shit done live retreat in thailand both are designed for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs to get a lot of work done rapidly and whether you need some personal coaching while working away at home or a retreat in Thailand where you can get out of your normal routine and surround yourself with other successful entrepreneurs, we have those options for you. Check out all the details at thebusinessmethod.com and we'll see you on the next podcast.